Hi everyone, we're continuing on with our tour of the cranial bones of the skull. The cranial bone we want to review now is the ethmoid bone. The ethmoid bone is a small rectangular bone that is wedged between the frontal bone and the sphenoid bone. Let's take a tour of the ethmoid bone with the plain skull. As you can see, the superior portion of the ethmoid bone, as seen right here, is completely surrounded by the frontal bone. This part of the ethmoid bone right here is the same as this part of the ethmoid bone on the isolated ethmoid bone. There are several distinctive structures that can be seen on the superior surface of the ethmoid bone. This prominent uh, structure that uh, projects centrally is known as the Christigalli, which literally translates to the crest of the rooster. Someone thought that this thing looked like a rooster's head. The Christigalli sits upon a depressed horizontal plate known as the cribiform plate. This plate separates the cranial cavity from the nasal cavity. Below this plate is the nasal cavity. So uh, if you look very closely at the cribiform plate, you're going to see all of these tiny little holes or perforations. These holes are known as the olfactory foramina. So remember, foramen means hole, but foramina is the plural form of foramen. Nerve fibers that carry sensor information for smell travel through these tiny little holes. Now, let's look at the inferior aspect of the ethmoid bone. The ethmoid bone makes up the ceiling and the upper lateral walls of your nasal cavity. This thin wall-like structure seen from the inferior aspect of the ethmoid bone is known as the perpendicular plate. It's called the perpendicular plate because it runs perpendicularly to the cribiform plate. The perpendicular plate makes up the upper portion of your nasal septum. So the nasal cavity is partitioned down the middle by a thin bone reinforced wall known as the nasal septum. So here you can see the nasal septum on our plain skull. All right, so uh, this upper portion of the nasal septum is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. Most of the nasal septum, however, is a bone that's listed in your term sheet uh, that's known as the vomer. All right, the vomer really can't be appreciated very well on these plain skull models. We do have another mid-sagittal model in the lab that shows the vomer much better. So while we're here, I want you to notice these scroll-shaped bones that project inwards into the nasal cavity. This upper set of scroll-shaped bones are known as the middle nasal conche. The singular form of conche is concha. There is also a set of inferior nasal conche, or conche rather, um, but they are actually uh, considered to be their own bones. Now, in addition to that, we also have superior nasal conche, but they are too small to be noticeable. So, both the superior and middle nasal conche are part of the ethmoid bone. So here on the isolated ethmoid bone, these two bumps, which you can see centrally at the inferior aspect of the isolated ethmoid bone, are your superior nasal conche. So lastly, remember that we said that the sphenoid bone contains sinuses. Well, the ethmoid bone also contains sinuses. They're called the ethmoid sinuses. These sinuses are sometimes referred to as the ethmoid air cells. However, you can't see these air-filled spaces with the plastic models.